you're so good at taking what's in front of you and making it work. And you've told the story so many times of Stephanie McMahon hearing you freestyle in the back of the bus and going, could, could you do that for us? Sure. What if that moment never happened? I would get fired. I would have been fired in, in two months. The, that tour was in October and I would have been part of the December cuts. Then what would have happened? Uh, so before I was a professional, before WWE was paying me, I was doing it as a hobby. And I told myself I would do it as a hobby until I couldn't do it anymore. Like when I found wrestling, I wasn't like, man, I'm going to make boatloads of money doing this. It was like, okay, I'm going to find a shit job that'll be flexible with hours so I can work. And I think I just would have worked. You know, I was living in Massachusetts. I'd moved back into the room I grew up in. I was sleeping in a, in a twin bed at my dad's house. That was from moving back here. You were in Venice Beach, right? No, I was, I was in Venice. Okay. And I moved to Kentucky. And then when For I got on TV to get rides to the airport, I moved back in with my dad. He was so gracious to take me in. And I slept literally in the room I grew up in on the same bed because my room hadn't been altered. What was on the walls? Uh, pictures of cars, pictures of bodybuilders, and pictures of wrestlers. Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I just think I, I found out that Killer Kowalski School was there. I never knew that was there. Um, and I, at the time, I was doing something with a promotion there. Gosh, I can't remember the name, but I'd gone up to like, on my days off, again, what do you do during your free time? I would land and then just go wrestle with the guys at this promotion. So I was wrestling in my spare time. So I probably would have got fired and just done that. 